Last month on the same day, I was doing a project in Urbana, Iowa. Now Urbana, Iowa is in the middle of the American heartland and in the middle of nowhere. I was working with a company that is a fresh, dynamic, new tech startup in the middle of nowhere. So let me introduce you to ClickStop. So ClickStop is one of the fastest growing companies in Iowa. They have been named one of the top places to work in Iowa. But they are growing at lightning pace. They have to double their workforce in the next year. They just finished a multi-million dollar addition onto their company. It has a pub. Who doesn't want a pub? It has massages. It even has a movie theater. So they are primed and ready for the best possible candidates. But part of their problem is they're in Iowa, in the middle of a cornfield. Now they had over 50 job openings as we speak when I met them less than a month ago. They had six applicants to those 50. So you can imagine their frustration. And how are they supposed to grow their business and find key talent when they're not findable? So I want to talk about how do I become a candidate magnet? Your online presence is everything. And what we don't know is how do people search for us before they ever contact us? What happens from the moment they sit down at their computer to the moment they fill out an application and find you as a potential uh, employer? So let's talk about how do we become a magnet to these great top talents. First of all, we're not findable at all. We haven't thought about what does our online presence look like before we ever speak to them. The tables have turned. The prospects, the candidates, are in control. They get to decide who they're going to work with, not us. They get to make first impress impressions. They get to judge. So we need to understand by which mediums are they checking us out. And then finally, I'm going to give you some very specific strategies that you can immediately implement to be a top uh, candidate magnet in your space. All right. So unfindable by top talent. So let's walk through what I learned about ClickStop. Now, what they experienced is what I call they're not findable. So we have to put ourselves in the place of a prospect. How do we get top? talent from the best universities in the middle of nowhere, right? Well, they have a pub, they've got the massages, right? They're all Googling up their company, but they're not getting the kind of candidates they need. So let's take a look at what we see right now when we Google them. So we Google ClickStop, we see all about them. I call this the Mimi Show. Well, here's what I have. We're a top place to work in Iowa. We have career opportunities, and we have brands that know about us, and big dreams, and contact us in our spaces, right? And you hear crickets in the background. <laughs> Who cares? Okay, I don't know ClickStop yet. Remember, I am looking for the best job. I'm a product manager. I'm a programmer. I don't know about ClickStop yet, but I should. But here's where I start. I start at best place to work in Iowa. And guess what? No click stop. So even though they say they're the best, I haven't met them yet. We've never had that virtual handshake. So we've got to think about what do I need to do to be right where they're searching. OK, who's been to Google Images? Google Images? Yeah, I mean, we love pretty pictures. Images are one of the most powerful ways that people will search for us. Google Images is the number two way people search on Google. It's incredibly powerful. So when we Google ClickStop, let's take a look and see what their images say about working for them. Well, they've definitely got their uh, logos. I call these ghost town website pictures. No one's there. Okay. <laughs> no one works there. So what you'll see here, and then I see here we have ClickStop Cares, which is great. I see another ghost town picture of an empty building. And then I see they, have, they like to party. So maybe that's a real plus for some candidates but it's not really conveying what it means to work for them. It's conveying what they want to put out into the world. Well, we have our logo, and we have our building, and then, oh, look, we've got our owners, which I don't even know who they are because there's no name on here. Look, we have an empty building, and oh, look, we like to party. Do you see how maybe this may not be the best reflection of gaining the top talent? 
Let's take another look. So if I do best places to work in Iowa, this is where I want to see click stop. Now, findability enables you to adjust every image on your website to show up there. Not necessarily under your name, but how people search. Google's a search engine, right? Facebook's a search engine, Twitter's a search engine. So we have to be thinking like the prospect, first and foremost, before I ever figure out who you are and how, whether I want to work for your company, I got to find you. And I got to start somewhere. All right, Google Video, who's been on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube? Yeah, it's incredibly entertaining modality. Average time on YouTube is more than two minutes. So we really love entertaining videos. So let's take a look at this. This is the YouTube channel. And what we want to take a look at is they haven't updated the video in uh, nine months. Okay, so if you're looking for a hip, great place to work, uh, this kind of looks like Snoozeville to me. Okay, and let's go to the next one. So here, best places to work in Iowa. When you go to video in Google, that's coming from YouTube in most cases. And here you'll see we've got best places to work, we've got best 15 cities, we've got all this great information. Click Stop could easily take one of their videos and optimize it for best place to work in Iowa. We're looking for the best IT professionals. We're looking for the best top talent. But unfortunately, no one cares about our name yet, right? We need to do a little more virtual handshake. So we need to figure out exactly what they're searching and optimize our content to meet that demand, okay? Now, also, what do candidates see is absolutely critical. So if you have not Googled your company and really looked at what do they see at each and every listing, is that the best possible representation of my brand? So the tables have turned now. What we know that candidates have unprecedented access to information about our brand and about our company. So what I call digital dirt. Okay, digital dirt means if anyone has ever said anything bad about your company, maybe they've gone to, um, they have, maybe you have something that people have said that's negative. Maybe you had a lawsuit. All kinds of things happen that are out of our control that can hurt our ability to recruit. So we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to make sure that we have the best possible representation of our brand. No digital dirt. And you know what? The tables have turned because candidates have unprecedented access to us. They can check us out. They go to websites like Glassdoor. Who has a listing under their name for Glassdoor and Google? Anybody? I'm trying to see. You might want to check that out. Glassdoor is where employees go in and rate your companies. So usually, <laughs> who goes to a company and rate their company is after they've been let go. So you can imagine sometimes the reviews on Glassdoor are not so lovely. So we want to make sure that we're monitoring and looking at that. The next one is consumerist. Consumerist, if anyone could go on and post something negative about your product, about your brand, about your company, and you would have almost no ability to remove it, no matter how many lawyers get involved. So if that shows up right under your corporate brand, that's not good. That's an instant no thank you when candidates are looking up for you. The next one is ripoff report. Things happen. Bad things happen to good companies. And we want to make sure that we are keeping an ear to the ground. And anything that shows up in Glassdoor, consumers to ripoff report will rank right under your corporate brand. And you can't take that back. It's there. I've seen and worked with so many companies that have had issues that they can't take back, a lawsuit. Right? We have to be prepared. As HR professionals, we need to have our, what I call, findable house in order. We know exactly what comes up under our company name. We know what comes up under images. And we've optimized those images so we craft everything that shows up there. And then, of course, we have video. Think about the video you currently have in your YouTube channel. How can we leverage that video to be a great reflection of what's it like to work at your amazing organization. And then, of course, we have Yelp. Like it or not, Yelp is a very big option. Now, even if you don't have a walk-in presence, you're not a restaurant, Yelp ranks. 
So for me, in my findable world, I use every single tool at my disposal. Yelp will rank right under your name. So if I have a chance to start thinking about, here's my search results. How can I make one, two, three, four, five, and all of those search results exactly what I want? You have control to do this. But what I find is that most marketing teams and IT teams are so interested in um, the robot of Google that they forget about the human side of a job search. And if I Google you, I hear your name. Someone says, that's an amazing place to work. I'm going to Google it. And what I see right there in search results is gold for you. You need to make sure that each one of those results is the very best representation of your brand. If it's not, that candidate's going to move on. Some of the best candidates are going to say, no, thank you. I'm gone. Boring. Don't care. So here's one of the biggest issues I see with businesses is bubble language, we like to call it. It's the words and phrases that you use just inside your own organization. And these phrases make you unfindable online. And let me show you what, about, what I mean by that. So I always say uniqueness is the enemy of findability. So in marketing, we've been trained to be unique. Our unique mission statements, unique taglines. We come up with unique product names, all kinds of uniqueness. And then we go out in there and we brand it really hard, right? We're going to get, we're going to get billboards and flyers, and we're going to do convention floors, and we're going to make that name work. Well, for internet, it makes you unfindable the more unique you are. So we have to stay connected with how people search. So there's a number of keyword tools. And I've got a whole list of those keyword tools back at Booth 31, where I'm going to be after the session. And I'm more than happy to give anyone a list of my best tools. But there are some fantastic tools that will tell you exactly what searchers are doing. So one of the trends I see in HR is we come up with these very creative names, like Marketing Ninja. Yes, that is a real title. That's 320 searches a month. Well, you're like, well, maybe that's OK. Well, I think we can do better than that. Then we have Web Guru or Guru Web, same to Google. And you'll see here, 90 searches, congratulations. 90 searches internationally, okay? I think we can do better than that. Now, here's a Microsoft title, which I thought was quite entertaining. Galactic Viceroy of Research Excellence. There is no title that could be more unfindable than that, okay? I thought it was very, I like Viceroy. I think I might add that into my title. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> OK, so let's take a look at the real data. So there's lots of keyword tools out there, but this is the data that matters. Do you notice what number one is? Marketing manager salary gets searched 12,100 times per month on average over a year. Do we talk about salary? Right? No, don't talk about salary. But that's top of mind for the searcher. So we have to figure out as HR professionals, how do we address the concept of salary? It is top of mind for your candidates. Of course it is. So we need to figure out how do we have a great conversation about compensation? How do we let them know that you are the best business because you really understand about compensation and what that means based on their experience as a new hire? Then we have, of course, marketing manager. Oh, look, marketing manager job description. Right? These are pretty boring, but they are super effective because we're using the exact language of the searchers. Product manager job description, 6,600 searches a month. Production manager job description, again, 6,600. Product manager interview questions. Isn't that interesting? So they're trying to get ready for their interview, so they're searching for interview questions. So I think that it's important that when we think about how we are thought leaders in the HR community, we need to think about how can we give them what they're asking for. They want to talk about salary, figure out a way to talk about it. You don't have to give the exact numbers, but talk about your process and what that means to your organization. Also, interview questions. Here are some of the inner questions we often ask during our, during our job review process. Why not talk about it? Help them to be prepared. And that's top of mind for them. So let me introduce you to Aaron. Aaron is the largest manufacturer of bamboo toothpicks in the US. Woohoo, exciting, right? Have you guys ever been to the bar? <laughs> and in the, in the, you know, they put those really fancy little knotted toothpicks in your drink with like the olives in it. That increases the price of that drink by two US dollars. 
$2, just for the toothpick. So let's have more toothpicks, shall we? So when we looked at this, Aaron had a really big problem between pick and toothpick. They called their entire website pick. Now, what do you think is wrong with the word pick on us? Yeah, bullying websites. They were ranking for bullying websites. Remember, this is a toothpick manufacturing company. Okay, so here's part of that problem is they never Googled the word pick. Well, we have guitar picks. We've got mining picks. And you'll see here, you can see Fender, Gibson, Dunlap. These are all the categories that are directly related to that concept. So you see how that phrase disconnected them to a huge amount of search volume because they were too much in their marketing head. They're like, we're not toothpicks, we are picks. And that made them instantly unfindable and ranking for bullying websites. So, let's, so we had to just reveal this to them. This is what they do. Knotted bamboo toothpicks, right? Seems pretty obvious. But they had never used the word toothpick on their website ever. They had only used the word pick. So and what, now you'll see that that's their toothpicks, that's their toothpicks, that's their tooth. All of these have been strategically optimized. Each image has been named where, how I want it to be findable. Not image 1.jpg, image 2.jpg, image 3.jpg, right? I'm going to say best knotted bamboo toothpick on the planet.jpg, okay? I'm going to name each one of the images on my website strategically so that each one gets pulled and placed into search results. And just like for your company, you can take those images and slowly start to craft an image plan. And that image plan is going to be, how do we want to be findable to the best candidates? What are the best pictures that we have that we can make sure they rank here? So that we're not just using our language, we're using their language. We're not using pics, we're using t bamboo toothpicks. Okay? We have to make sure that we're using the language of our candidates. And then finally, how do I become a top talent magnet? And this is really what we want, right? We want to make sure that we garner the best possible candidates online. So we have to think like a candidate. So these are the best possible recommendations I can give you in 20 minutes, OK? So these are how you can go back and sharpen your knife in regard to how do we really look to candidates. You need to have a cutting edge, mobily responsive website. Pull it up on your phone right now. If it doesn't look amazing, there needs to be some work done. Then we've got, of course, great search results. I want you to go back, sit with your team, and Google your company. Now, whether you Google it in Glassdoor, or you Google it in Facebook, you Google it in Twitter, it's all a search engine, YouTube being the number two search engine on the internet. So we need to make sure that we are vigilant about being very careful about what shows up under our name, because we don't know how that will stop candidates from applying. Current and active social media. So if I go in there and your last blog post was six months ago, that's probably not going to give the very best, um, very best look for that new, new, um, new candidate. So we want to make sure that we're really staying active and uh, uh, cutting edge with social. Using candidate language. So remember, guys, when you're titling your, 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 um, your, your job descriptions, when you're looking at how to create your profiles online and what those profiles say, make sure to speak to them. Not in first person, where we're looking for the highest quality staff members and they have to have this experience, and talk to them as real people. It's not a resume business. It's a people business. So we want to make sure that we are speaking in a way that when they have their first day on the job, they feel exactly that moment when they meet your company online. I want them to have that great sense of your culture, and I also want them to say, yes, I want to work there. And then next, of course, is your culture clear? When I go to Google Images and I look at all those images, those images tell a huge story to me about what it's like to work at your company. So pay very close attention. Work with your marketing teams or your IT teams or whoever manages your online presence. Make sure that those images are exactly what you want. And that can make such a huge difference in regard to the quality of the candidates that you're going to get on your site. So here's what I recommend you do. A big part of the calls I get as part of my practice to help companies be more findable is that they don't listen. We spend so much time marketing pushing out materials that we don't listen. 
So first of all, google.com slash alerts. How many of you have alerts set up? Show of hands, please. OK, I should see a lot more hands. Google.com slash alerts. Set it up, and you will be the first to know if anyone says anything negative about your company. You've got to stay ear to the ground, right? We have to listen to what's happening so that we know how to respond to that. Then we have, of course, mention.com will tell you anything that's happening on social. So it's like Google alerts for social media. It will give you the very first notification if anyone on social media says anything bad about your company. The next is, of course, monitor your reviews very carefully. Make sure also whoops, that you have a disaster plan. If something negative comes up on Glassdoor or on some other website, you have sat down and thought about, how are we going to handle this? What's the best possible way that we can rebound? Ask United about how the best possible way to rebound from that, right? So what we have to think about is if they'd sat down and really thought about it, maybe they would have had a better approach. So we need to be mindful of let's be prepared, let's be ready. And are you a talent magnet? I want you to walk the path of your prospects. My book, Marketing Espionage, walks you through what's it like when you Google you? What's it like when prospects Google you? And what are competitors doing that I can learn from and apply to my own business? So if you'd like a little bit of time with me, I ask you to please pull out your business card right now. Pull your business card out. Write talent on the back. 